just trying to make this pop out a little more so that when I do a bump map, it kind of sticks out. So it's not working very well, though. All right, here we go. Just um, increase the brightness a bit and increase the contrast quite a bit. This does it makes the lines and cracks kind of pop out. And can go all the way. Right there. Alright, and then save as, say this as piston top um, bump. Alright. <coughs> Go back into Max, M for materials, and then in your default materials here, just scroll, just go up, and then go to parent, maps, bump, and then bitmap, and browse to your bump map that you created. Okay. And then when you go up and you render it, we'll test the results, but yeah, you can see it already. Um, it provides the cracks that look like they're really realistic, but it's a little heavy, so we're going to go down a bit. 15, perhaps. 10. Ten's not looking so bad. So at ten you have a very, very nice um, bump effect. Alright. Top is looking good. Next let's just quickly do this secondary cylinder here. <coughs> so what you can do is go to file open. Open the um, normal piston thing, and this is one of the tricks: is just reuse textures. Don't make new ones. There's no need. So let's see. Select just the box. Control C. Go to your other one and press Control V. Now you have a pretty much ready to make texture, although it's the wrong way. So go to free transform and just rotate it 90 degrees drag it out a bit there you go alright um, let's just bring it out a little more ok enter save this as piston bottom UVW. Go into Max, Materials, get a new one. And actually you should probably name these so. Piston top. This is going to be piston bottom. Diffuse, bitmap, piston bottom. Enable in viewport. And just enable it. Decrease the opacity and <coughs> go to File, Place, and find the rust texture again. And just let's see. this is going to attempt to do, I think, is make like a rust line along the top or wherever uh, you want it to be, pretty much. So let me actually just save this for a second so I can see what the orientation is. So save. Mm. Alright, so we need to rotate it then. So rotate it 90 degrees. Okay, and then just...
just kind of bring it forward. Save. <coughs> and we need to go the opposite direction. So, edit, transform, or it's 180 degrees. And just move this bit, save, and we're going the right way now. Next we just have to move it downward, I think. And alright, up. A little more. There's a lot of just manual positioning involved when you have stuff like this. But that doesn't look too bad. Next, um, rasterize this image here. A rasterize layer. Go to select, color range, pick on the white, and increase the fuzziness a bit, and just press delete. This way it'll get rid of most of the white that you don't want. Then um, go back to this layer here, increase that, change this to overlay. Let's just save that and see what we have. So instantly now we have this kind of super rusty texture. We'll uh, get rid of this in a second. But, so, decrease the opacity again using the eraser tool. Click on the rust layer. Just start erasing some of this extra stuff because it's just going to take up memory. We don't really need it. And also, you don't want it all the way around. So just erase the stuff that looks different. All right? And then zoom in to little parts like this, and you just have to clean up the texture a bit. So just kind of trim it off a bit. This just gives it a more natural flow, pretty much. Because you don't want those hard edges. Get rid of this stuff here. Okay. So bring this back to 100. Save. And here we have a very nice texture. As for this, though, we will. <coughs> Let's see. Probably just cut it off and copy a bit. Let's see how that works. So, what I'm going to do is select this, Control C, Control V. Dragon. Oops, uh, that's the wrong layer. Back. Control C, Control V. There we go. Alright. Um, lower the opacity on this a bit. Move this up and just position it. Change it to overlay. And bring this back up to 100%. Decreasing the opacity of this a bit. Alright, control S. Let's bring it down a bit as well. Alright, and let's just blur this out a bit. So, the blur tool. save it. And that is pretty much our finished piston texture. You could also texture this and this, but no real need. And now, you can put this in a static scene, or you could texture all the way up and move it. But um, either way, it's pretty nice. Be your final render here. You could add the bumps. and It's pretty snazzy looking. It's actually 
and using real textures also creates some aura of realism on it, which is very nice in 3D model. And uh, that's it.